May the words of my mouth and the meditations on all of our hearts always be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. I don't know about you, but I feel like Charlotte's reading, this reading from Corinthians was a sermon in and of itself. <clears throat> so thank you for that. We are all members of the body and we are all necessary. Not just us here or on live stream, but everyone. But I'm going to focus on something else a little different this morning. I wonder how many of you have ever attended a service in a synagogue? A few of us, yeah. Maybe it was a bar mitzvah or a bat mitzvah or a service during the high holy days. If you have, then you will know about what I'm about to share. And if you haven't, this is what I found so powerful as I worshiped with my friends and family who are Jewish. The focal point of the synagogue is the bima or the raised platform that everyone looks up to. It is where the speaker stands. So I suppose we could say this is a bima sort of. But in many synagogues, the bima is also the platform on which the ark that holds the Torah or the Holy Scriptures is placed. And the ark is usually ornately and beautifully lit from the inside and decorated so that it highlights the scripture, the Torah, which is behind the closed doors. Now, during the worship services that I've attended, there is a beautiful ritual in the synagogue when the doors are opened of the ark, and the Torah, still on scrolls, is brought out from the bima, completely powerful and reverently. Likewise, when a rabbi or the young person is reading their Torah portion or the scripture passage, there is great anticipation and reverence for what is being said and heard. It's as if a treasure is being revealed from the holy of holies, and is being shared with all those who are assembled. What was so powerful for me as well was during the High Holy Day service when the Torah is being processed throughout the congregation, through all of the aisles, people reach out to take their programs and to touch the Torah and then to put it to their lips as if they were kissing the Holy Scriptures. People want to connect with God's Holy Word. And this passage from Nehemiah tells us that Ezra stood above all the people, presumably on a bima, in the center of town, the square, by the water gate. No wonder people listened and wept as, they, as Ezra read from the book of the Law of Moses. He read from morning until night on the first day of the seventh month bringing the Holy Scriptures out into the town square and reading it for all the people to hear and providing explanations or midrash that didn't happen every day. It was a very special and important occasion. Like our practice of standing when the gospel is read each Sunday, we stand as Ezra stood to speak. And while I don't necessarily suggest that we bow our heads and worship the Lord with our faces on the ground or begin to weep when we hear the word of the Lord, it is worth thinking how powerful and life-changing and precious these words from Holy Scripture are and have been and will be for those who hear, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, as you might find familiar from the prayer that we pray on the Sunday closest to November 16th. Let me share it with you again, since we only hear it once a year. Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant us so to hear, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast to the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given in our Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, to be clear, we believe that God did not dictate or write Holy Scripture. Rather, God inspired human beings to write Holy Scripture, and these people wrote these words within their own context, with their own historical and cultural events and attitudes, 
as well as their own language. Like the community in the, gathered in the town square, Ezra was speaking to the men and women who were gathered. And then Jesus also spoke to the men and presumably just men who were in the synagogue reading from the Holy Scriptures. We all benefit by study, conversation, and interpretation. You see, Holy Scripture is not just a history book. It is a story that includes letters and poetry, prophecy, teaching, wisdom, and even apocalyptic literature, literature about the end times. When we were ordained, Sally and I, to, to orders of ministry, we said that we believe Holy Scripture contains all things necessary to salvation. And our vocation as people of God, as priests and deacons, are to continue to help others explore Holy Scripture and to apply God's word to our lives. In gospel, the Gospel of Luke, Jesus stood up as he was given the scroll from the prophet Isaiah. And he unrolled it and read the passage that we just heard Deacon Sally read. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and he sat down. We all know that Jesus sits down to teach. At least that's what Holy Scripture tells us. Jesus sits down and the people crowd around him so he can teach. And at that moment, Scripture says all of the eyes of those present were fixed on him, waiting for what he would say, how he would interpret these words. And he said to them, today, today the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. In that moment, Jesus claimed his calling, his identity, his purpose, his vocation. Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Can you imagine? People have been listening to these words, hearing these words, and waiting for the one, waiting for the one to come. And here in that moment, all of the eyes were fixed on him, and he said, I am the one you've been waiting for. Jesus is the one we follow. We follow Jesus and his teachings. We follow him and we want to do what he has taught us to do, to release the captives, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, to let the oppressed go free and to the recovery of sight to the blind, to level out the playing field so that every member of the body knows that they belong and that they are beloved. This is the message of Holy Scripture for people to belong and to become. It's on our banner. It's who we say we are. St. Nicholas is a place for people to become who they were born to be and who they are called to be as the body of Christ and to become an integral member of the body. We have need of one another. We have need of people who are searching we have need of people who want to connect. And that, my friends, is what we as the body of Christ need to be doing, to reaching out our hands in love, to sharing the good news of God in Christ, to being able to bring people to a place where they feel they can become whole, where they can become loved, where they can become known, and where they can become seen. The Chinese proverb, holds true, my friends. The journey, it says, of a thousand miles begins with a single step. We make progress by beginning. I pray that each and every one of us will commit to taking one step every day to reach out in love, to offer food or clothing or assistance, to help someone in need, to connect with someone who is considered other so that we are moving together 
to bring God's dream of beloved community to fruition. As we heard Charlotte read and as the Apostle Paul says, we all have different gifts and abilities, yet we are all important and valued and necessary. We need one another and we are dependent on one another. So let us bind together as one body in Jesus Christ to support and encourage one another on the journey, to invite people to come and join us on this journey and to encourage one another and to bring God's light and love and healing and joy to families, to communities, and to the world, one step at a time. Amen.